Thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. I'm doing an interesting, really awesome collaboration here. I've got Matt Landfair from Primary and Secondary and Gary from Survival Armor. And Gary, you've provided us a lot of really awesome donations today to do a test that you don't normally see on the internet. We're not just testing armor, as in deflecting actual projectiles, Correct. but what we're gonna test is the really what the blunt force trauma that's delivered to the person who receives that blow, even if that round doesn't penetrate the armor. Yeah. So can you tell me what we're doing here and how we're doing this so that we're getting proper scientific results? Yeah. Well, what we're going to do is uh, we, we've got the Roma Plastilina number one clay, which is the exact same test medium that the NIJ uses in the laboratory mm -hmm. when they're actually certifying the armor. Now, our clay is not what they treat, what they deem calibrated. Okay. Um, it's not at the appropriate temperature. It has been drop tested, all that, but it'll give us good relative results for today. And it's not exactly cold clay. It's been warm all day. So it's, it's fairly warm, but it's safe to say it's not calibrated, but that's okay for a field test, you know, such as Ab we're doing here. Absolutely. Um, so the, this kind of came up between Matt and I a little while back. We were talking about how much damage is imparted to the body when you take a hit on a rifle plate. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people seem to think there's some kind of magical waves that come in and crush your chest cavity and you die anyway. Sure. You know, and depending on the calibers, you know, something like that could be true. We talked about it earlier. Some of the medical studies I was able to dig up are out of the UK from Northern Ireland and they got shot with 14.5. Which is insane which, to think about. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really not applicable to United States law enforcement um, or people in the US who would be wearing rifle plates, period. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I thought would be interesting is to come out while we've got you guys here, film it, try a couple things. We could try just a plate on there with no other backer. So you yep. can see what kind of blunt force trauma is being transmitted if you're wearing just rifle plates. Mm -hmm. And then try the same thing with a soft armor backer, mm -hmm. which is going to further reduce that amount of blunt force trauma. And if yep. we're talking about civilian law enforcement in the US, that's really how it should be worn. There should be soft armor. Like a cushion? Yeah, behind the plates, because this is gonna give you your handgun protection. And then say in an active shooter situation, you're probably gonna get a plate over that. They're certainly not gonna strip off soft armor mm -hmm. to go to that. So I figured we could do a hit, just standalone rifle plate, then another hit with soft armor behind it and kind of compare the differences in the two. And in fact, we've got two different kinds of plates. We have one of our new survival armor AR-1000 steel plates. Um, traditionally, I haven't been a huge fan of steel rifle plates because of spalling. Mm -hmm. um, this is a spall lined plate, but the spall liner is effective for about two or three shots. It does a pretty good job. After that, it starts to really start spalling a lot, but they've gotten quite a bit better with the coatings you know, for, for spall protection. And AR-1000 is kind of cool in that it also gives you M193 protection, okay. which AR-500 historically yep has not. Yep. So, and I've actually even shot that plate with M855A1 and had some pretty good results with it too. Okay. So that's a standalone steel plate. It's mm -hmm. a three plus plus plate, which really says that it stops M855 ball. Okay. Um, and then I have something new here. This is a ceramic polyhybrid plate that we came up with called the lightweight. And you can feel it's actually pretty lightweight. Yeah, it is. Um, if in the patrol plate sizes, it comes in around a pound to a pound and a half. Okay. So it's really meant to be a full-time wear thing for patrol officers, not in emergency you throw your plates in. This is meant to be worn full-time on the person. So instead of wearing just soft armor or wearing like a go-to-war full-on rifle plate system, you augment your current system with this and Correct. you get some rifle protection on top of your soft yep, armor. Absolutely. Okay. So And that is also standalone rated. So we can shoot that both ways as well. But really the way I envision people using that is in conjunction with soft armor. Yep. But we can shoot both of them. Um, M80 Ball 7.62 NATO is kind of the certification cartridge. And for the purpose of this test, that's also the cartridge that you'll see the most dramatic back face signatures, the dents in the clay. So I figure that's a good cartridge to use for that test. Which is what we have here. We've got Magtech M80 Ball, and we're going to be using an XCR rifle, which, uh, and we're gonna be shooting this at uh, 50, feet, 50 feet, which is the proper distance for this type of test. Yeah, and, and an interesting side note, it's also, if you look at the FBI statistics, it is where officers get shot with rifles. Um, the officers in the United States, if they're gonna be killed with a rifle, there were none recorded that I could find that were closer than 50 feet. So, wow, yeah. So that's actually, and, and the two cartridges, incidentally, are 223, 5.56, and 7.62 by 39. Mm -hmm. Those are the two most likely cartridges to be used. So the 7.62 M80 cartridge 
is kind of there and everything below that. And generally speaking, people consider those to be lesser threats. This is a real outlier in types of normal situations in which law enforcement officers are engaged right. with a rifle. Sort of a worst case scenario almost. Yeah, I get that. With the AR-1000 versus the 500, now I understand a lot of people have had concerns with the AR-500 not being a steel for, to be actually armor that people designed it basically to be a target but not to be worn. Correct. What's the difference between that and this? AR-1000 and this AR-1000 in particular is a, a Swedish meal, ballistically milled steel that's made specifically for this application. It's not made for front end loaders or you know yeah, anything exactly. like that. So it gets lot tested. Um, it is purpose built for this application. So we've had some, I've, I've actually been pretty impressed with it and from coming from a guy who doesn't really like steel rifle plates. Yeah. Um, I've been pretty happy with it. So instead so. of taking something that's normally a target and applying it as armor, the Swedes actually went, ago, went about making a steel plate into armor specifically. That's right. Okay, very interesting. And with this, this is reusable. I see that you have some tools to... Yep, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll be able to see a dent in that clay from the impact. We'll kind of scrape it level. I got a set of calipers here. We'll have to convert it to millimeters. The NIJ standard for back face signatures, the dent in that clay, on calibrated clay, mm -hmm. granted, we'll probably see shallower dense because it's not as warm as it should be. Yes. Um, but the standard is 44 millimeters. Okay. Now, interestingly, that's another thing you and I talked about. The military is actually increasing that. Civilian law enforcement is kind of staying at 44. Military is going for their testing to 58. Um, wow. Which tells me that they're really not seeing the type of blunt force injuries yeah. from impacts on these plates that warrant even the 44 millimeters. Yeah. So, It'll be kind of interesting to see. So there's a situation there where maybe you could actually reduce the weight of your armor because you're not so much worried about that's that type of blood force it. trauma, that's, reducing the load on the soldier. That's exactly why they're doing it. That makes it. sense. All right, so we're here at 50 feet. We've got one round of M80 ball and we've got the AR-1000 in a plate carrier there in front of that medium. So let's go ahead and fire one shot and see what we get. We are clear. Let's go see what the results are. All right, so we have our first hit on the target. Let's go ahead and take this apart and see what we got. Yeah, let's take a look. So you can see, let me pull it back right here. You can see definitely where that impact point was. This is smoking, in yeah, fact. Yeah, it's smoking. Yeah. And, and you can actually see too, the spall, most of it came out the front. Mm -hmm. and so this is important to note on a steel plate. You can see there's very little, or little vertical dispersion up through here. I don't see anything, in fact. Yeah, so yeah. most of the spalling yeah. went out the front. And that's okay. what I've seen typically with this spall liner. Mm -hmm. Two or three hits, mm -hmm. you're going to get pretty good vertical protection against spall. After that, you're going to start seeing spall come out through the, through the top of the The fear, of, of course, carrot. is taking it up into your throat. Correct, yeah, but course. really two or three hits on a rifle plate, I mean, that's <laughs> If you're taking that many, it's already such a bad day that we're having a different problem. Right, so, so yeah. you can see... <laughs> try to displace. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> okay. The spall really didn't affect the vertical part of Did this not. right here. Mm -hmm. So we'll unsnap this here and we'll take and lift this away. Um, you can see it was stopped on the plate. We had a fairly flat surface here and I see really, really no discernible I don't see anything at all. back Same. face signature yeah. on steel. So let's take the plate out. So there's your plate. Yeah. You can see the impact point. And there's a little, there's the back tiny. of it. Oh, yeah. a tiny, I mean, it's there. There's a visible dent for a back face deformation pattern. Right. But it is, uh, it's quite minor actually. Yeah. And inside this carrier, which was also a little bit padded, mm -hmm. like, like a, you know, plate carrier would be, um, I, I don't think we'd even be able to get a measurable mm -hmm. back face signature off of that. So really you're taking the energy of the bullet. You're kind of destroying the mass of the projectile and you're spreading that impact energy, not just over a very small surface area, you're spreading it over the surface area of the whole plate, yeah. essentially. So that means, you know, pick, pick your number in terms of foot pounds of energy, whatever cartridge you've used. Um, you're not just focusing it on a fingertip, you're focusing on something that's 10 by 12. And you can see the result on the clay is, there's not really a whole lot of blunt force trauma you know, associated with something like this. So we can postulate from this effect that while the person would probably be pretty concerned that something bad just happened. Oh yes. They're probably not having a broken sternum or a dislodged aorta or something like right. that. Right, I find yeah. it very unlikely, particularly with the steel plates, mm -hmm. you're gonna see a lot less in terms of blunt force trauma injuries 
to the body. Okay, so is that to say if we go to that ceramic plate, we might see more? Yeah, I think you will. Okay, well, that's is that the next part of our test? Uh, let's do it with soft armor. Well, I, I guess we don't even really need to do that with soft yeah. armor because... We already had a null effect, yeah. so soft armor would only displace it more. So right. I think now we should go to the ceramic. Let's do a ceramic and see what it does bare, and then let's put a... Also, you've got to point out, that's an awesome shot. Oh, yeah, good yeah. shot. Thanks. <laughs> Okay. No, we'll set this aside. I'll reload it with the ceramic. We'll shoot it bare, and then we can do it again with soft armor because I think you will see some back face. With We're back at 50 feet. One more round of M80 ball. This time we've got the ceramic plate with no Kevlar backing. Let's see what we get. All right, we just put a round on the ceramic plate with no Kevlar backing at 50 feet. Yep. Let's take a look. Let's take a look and see where it hit. Should have been towards the bottom edge of the plate over here. Which is what I think we were shooting for. Yep. Hopefully we'll I did what we wanted. We'll look at the clay. Now, oh point. my! Yeah, you can see a definite back face signature. It did stop the projectile, and it's going to be here inside this plate. Whoa. Here's the plate. Oh wow, look at that. So as I told you, this is a ceramic and polyethylene hybrid plate. So you can see a little bit of separation there at the bottom. And that's how come, you know, rifle plates can't take infinite hits. This wasn't that much of an edge hit, honestly, either. I thought I edged it, but that's not really... It's about that's yeah, not, an inch and a half. Not terrible, though. No. So from here, I mean... Yeah, wow. And you can see that bulge mm -hmm. on the back of the plate. That would be energy transfer to your body if you were wearing bare plates. Yes. Um, so you are going to see some blunt force trauma from that, let's see what it measures out at. That is a stark difference from that AR-1000 steel plate. It is, so what we'll do is let's kind of scrape this level. Just like that, because it will kind of bunch that clay up. Sure. So you've got to kind of scrape that level It's like out. a crater, it's like getting hit by a meteor. Yeah, you've got, exactly. Now, you've got a crater now, so So okay. what we also have to do is subtract the thickness of whatever I'm measuring from to get the bottom edge of it. So okay. we'll just zero the caliper out. On that? On that. So about right there. Okay. And now we'll lay this flat and put this across the face of it. And then ah. we'll measure the deepest part of that indentation with the caliper. Makes sense. And we'll have to have somebody convert this to millimeters. Okay. Uh -oh. This is America. So we'll just run this down into the bottom of that dent till it touches, just like that. Okay. And now we have 0. 0.810. Wow. So if we convert that into millimeters, somebody got a phone, we can convert that. <laughs> Audience. There we go. What is it? 20 and a half. So 20 and a half millimeters. So, so half. the NIJ allowable is 44 millimeters. Mm -hmm. So that's about half of what's allowable. Of course, like I said, this clay is a little cold. So we so would have got a little more, yeah, but it wouldn't have been more. double. It would not have been above 44 millimeters. So let's take it, let's, let's go, let's jump up to 30. We're still well below 40. Still well below it. Yeah. That's still on that mindset with saying that's that. Painful. When I look at that, that does not look good. That seems like a very painful event. When we have recreated officer shootings, in the laboratory mm -hmm. with soft armor, particularly with 44 Magnum, because you get the same kind of effect. You see these dramatic back face signatures in the clay. Yes. When we've taken actual situations that have happened mm -hmm. on vest sizes, because the size of the vest actually does matter when you're shooting it for, for back face Displacing the, the, the energy more evenly right. across Bigger a broader vests. surface. Yep, exactly. It's like punching with a needle versus a fist. So yep. we've had shootings where in the laboratory when we've replicated them, same distance, same caliber, same vest, that were over 60 millimeters. So the NIJ allowable is 44. The officers that sustained those 60 millimeter back face signatures were able to return fire, kill the person that was attacking them and suffered no long-term ill effects. Triple. Just like what, bruising or what? Yeah. Did, oh, really, interesting, yeah. fascinating, okay. Yeah, so while that looks kind of like a lot when mm -hmm. you think about it, I mean, think about how much your chest will compress during CPR. Yeah. You know, or something along that line. So the, the famous line in body armor is the dynamic elastic human torso. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. what, that's what people call it. So that's actually not that much. And, and interestingly enough, the 44 millimeters is not something they arrived at out of anything other than it's an arbitrary number. Oh. It's a number that they decided because this wasn't meant to be a tissue simulant. Mm. It was made to be consistent, repeatable, and a scientific control. And so when they arrived at the 44 millimeters, that was just a standardized number for testing. 
Um, but it has proven out through the years that that's, a, that's actually a pretty good number. I mean, we just don't see these kinds of injuries on people who get shot um, where blunt force trauma is causing any long-term wow. serious harm. So that's actually, you know, that's actually pretty good. And now I think we should try it again with yep. soft arm behind it. see what it. that looks like. So it's interesting. It's like the BMI of blunt force trauma. It's like, yeah. mm, that seems about right. And it seems right. like it actually wasn't that bad of a no, call. No, it was actually pretty good gas. You know? But there's a little room for error there in which maybe we could decrease the weight and maybe make it a little bit less concerning. Well, like but... I said, the military's kind of switching to 58 millimeters. Yeah, wow. So All right. that should tell you that we're not seeing the kinds of yeah. injuries that people are supposing you would receive from that impact. Because it does look dramatic, but mm. the reality of it is, it's it's really, I mean, you're going to know it. You know, you're going to probably have some bruising. You could potentially have some broken ribs or something. And you always have that potential for, you know, a pneumothorax mm -hmm. or something along those lines. But as far as long-term debilitating injuries or even injuries that take you out of the gunfight, they just, you just don't see them. Wow. Cool. All right, let's go to the Kevlar back and see what happens. Okay. Just try to get it somewhat back to level for these purposes. I'd have it totally level if it was in the lab. With my big pizza cutter. Then I just usually find the lowest spot and kind of push that back in. Pretty clean for these purposes. Soft armor right That's behind it. Nice. So now the top half of this plate. Which I'll expose this time so you can see it a little better. See that okay? Mm -hmm. All, right. All right, we're back at 50 feet. One more round of M80 ball. This time we have a ceramic plate backed by some soft armor. Let's see if we change the impact in regards to blunt force trauma. All right, we got a clean impact, hopefully in a little bit different spot. So yep. let's take a look at what changed with that soft backing. All right, so we had an impact right here. Yep. So let's peel this back and we'll take a look and see. So you can see there was no penetration through into the soft armor. There was not. And hmm. take a look at that. Yeah. What a significant difference. <laughs> yeah. And that's a significant difference even after this plate had already been struck once before. Correct. So take a look at the plate now so Whoa. you can see. That was your first impact. That's your second impact. It is. The plate did its job. Mm -hmm. um, it did it by itself and with the soft armor. You can see it's starting to delaminate a significant you know, amount mm -hmm. on the back there. So you're not gonna get a great deal more hits on this plate, um, but it did its job. And I don't know that we have a discernible not really. I don't see anything that's clearly visible enough to measure at all. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know that we have really a measurable back face signature there. So the soft armor, behind it, which is really how American, you know, law enforcement are going to wear this product. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see you're getting pretty good protection against wow. blunt force trauma, so. That is a huge difference, you huge know, because you think of so many people, you just get a rifle plate, put it on, don't worry about any kind of backing like soft armor, and well, it reduces weight, reduces heat, but uh, in regards to now seeing the difference in terms of the blunt force trauma delivered to you in the case of an impact, uh, it's, uh, I think you it's want a that, pretty you want that as well. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> yeah, compelling case. It is. it is how really the product should be used. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a pretty good graphical representation that a lot of times when these guys think, oh, you're going to go flying back or there's some kind of energy transfer, you know, it's almost like a movie myth. Yep. You fly through the window the, and land five feet behind. This or box yeah. weighs roughly 70 pounds. Um, so 70 pound box didn't hardly move at all. No, and we'll see that on the footage too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it didn't hardly move at all. You're pretty much destroying the mass of the bullet. You are having a lot of impact energy there still. You're not getting that penetrating trauma. And realistically, 
totally survivable. And not only survivable, but you're probably still going to be in the fight. That's nuts. That's really interesting. That is a really interesting demonstration of something. Yeah. That's like science and physics right there, isn't yeah. it? Well, I think that's all we can do with this. We've proven the point there that the Kevlar back, excuse me, soft armor backer mm -hmm. in front of this ceramic plate is a huge difference in terms of the type huge of energy difference. that's deployed into your body in case of an impact. Yep, huge difference. Also interesting to see the steel without a backer did a really good job as well. In fact, yeah. just as good. So it's a weird thing. Armor is like this give and take, just like yeah, everything in life. it's just like yeah. everything. You know, pr steel has pros and cons. Mm -hmm. um, you've got spalling, you've got potential for ricochets. You, you have all of those things. Wait. Um, wait. You also though, are gonna get much, many more hits on a steel plate than you will on a ceramic plate. Wow. Or even on a poly plate. So, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, ceramic though, I mean, this is for lightweight, for ease of wear, for everyday yep. wear. If you wanna wear it full time, all the time, mm -hmm. if that's your job and you need that personal protection, that's, that's a pretty tough plate to beat and pretty good product. I mean, I could see, you know, it's just like anything else. The gun that's too big and bulky, that's awesome that you leave at home. Yep. The yep. armor that's too big and bulky or heavy, yep. you leave at home or you may. And that's not a good thing on that bad day. But so. I hope that'll answer some of the questions, you know, that I know you and I have both been seeing. Oh yeah. Um, as far as this, because it's just not a demonstration that I really see too often. So. I never have. So I, first, so I want to say here is I want to thank you, Matt, for putting this together to have these types of people here to do this kind of content. Oh, my pleasure. That's an incredible thing to collaborate with your channel. Thank you. And I want to thank you, Gary, for bringing out uh, all the proper materials to do this testing, but also actually sacrifice some serious actual real product here in the process Absolutely. of doing it. So thank you, because that's educational to everybody, not just an audience that's just curious, but people who actually need to live and depend on this stuff to save their lives. Yep, absolutely, that's what we love to do. And I also want to thank my Patreons because it's because of them that I could be here at all yep. to do this. So guys, if you are a Patreon, thank you. If you're not, please consider it. Although Gary did provide this all free of charge, but just being here is because of you. If you can't, please consider it. If you can't, I understand. Just subscribe to the channel for this kind of really interesting information and share with your friends. Thank you very much.